The trial and conviction of Senegal's opposition leader has sparked protests and riots in one of Africa's most stable democracies. Several people are dead. Why has the unrest been so widespread? And is there a risk of more instability? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Mohamed Jamjoum. Demonstrations broke out in Senegal after a court sentenced opposition leader Usman Sonko to two years in prison. He was convicted of corrupting the youth but cleared of rape. The charges relate to an incident at a massage parlor in 2021. Supporters say the violence across the country reflects widespread anger, particularly among unemployed young people who feel ignored by the political elite. They say the case against Sonko was politically motivated and part of a plot to stop him running for president next year. Macky Sall's government denies this and says Senegal is facing an insurrection. It's promised to use all measures necessary to restore stability. Nicholas Hawk was at some of those protests on Thursday and has this report from Dakar. We're inside Dakar University and look at it now. There's sheer destruction everywhere across this university but also across the country. Banks have been looted, supermarkets have been destroyed, and the army has been called out. Here, inside Dakar University, where there was heavy protests yesterday, students burnt down the faculty of law. Now, that's more than a symbol. They say they don't trust the justice system of this country, following the verdict of Usman Sonko. And they say they'll continue to fight until he's eligible to run in the upcoming presidential elections. And that's why you have so much violence at the moment. That's what's at stake. It's these elections that are still nine months away. So why now? Well, one of the reasons there's so much tension is the intentions of President Macky Sall. Will he or will he not run for a third mandate? And that uncertainty is fueling the violence here in Senegal, a country that's not accustomed to such violence, a country known for its stability and democracy. But now, the military on the streets, protecting key areas. People are scared, they're at home. There's a saying in Wolof, that, that in the local Senegalese language, that the Senegalese do not like the sight of blood, but there's been so much blood being poured. And so, now, religious leaders are involved in trying to negotiate a way out of this political crisis. They'll be meeting with opposition leader Usman Sonko, but also members of the government to find an end to the violence. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera for Inside Story. The West African country with a population of 17 million won independence from France in 1960. It has good relations with the U.S. and E.U. as well as China and has long been seen as a model of stability and democracy in a volatile region. The current unrest stems from domestic political rivalry. President Macky Sall was elected in 2012 and is due to step down next year. But he argues that he could run again because of changes to the Constitution in 2016, which shortened the presidential term. Former tax inspector Usman Sanko is popular among unemployed young people, and supporters say he's being targeted by political rivals, including Sall. Sanko's lawyer says the jail term jeopardizes his chance of running for office in 2024. All right, let's go ahead and bring in our guests in London. Mujahid Durmaz, who is an analyst with Verisk Maplecroft Global Risk Intelligence Consultancy. In Paris, Marie Roger Biloa, the chairwoman and CEO of the Africa International Media Group. And in Dakar, Borso Tall, a freelance journalist who has reported extensive, extensively on Senegal's political and social tensions. A warm welcome to you all, and thanks so much for joining us today on Inside Story. Borso, let me start with you today. Why has the unrest thus far in Senegal been so widespread? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, the widespread uh, news around Sonko's case or this case of uh, uh, rape and uh, sexual assault overall is uh, has, has reached this far simply because it's quite opposite of what Senegal has always been known for which means a 
peaceful country, stable in West Africa, and respectful of all international laws. So to come to this um, uh, state at which right now uh, the population is extremely angry at the government for simply having applied, and I will explain later, uh, the law over a rape case. Uh, that is um, the real reason why everything is uh, under chaos mm. right now. Uh, people are very angry and against the decision made by the justice system uh, to decide over a rape case um, so far. Marie Roger, let me get uh, your perspective on this. Um, do you believe that there's a risk for more instability? Do you think that, uh, th that these protests will spread, uh, that people will get angrier? So, you know, what we've been seeing so far is that, um, as uh, said before, Senegal has been trying to show um, a peaceful and democratic figure. And, um, and uh, if the government has always responsibility when there is trouble. But I think this time around, uh, Mr. Usman Sonko has been calling for riots and uh, telling his supporters to to go to the presidency and overthrow Mr. Makisa. And uh, this is quite a difference with other uh, politicians, even from the opposition. I remember that uh, a couple of years ago, there were situations where uh, other uh, candidates to uh, run us to, for the president had been excluded uh, for running, and uh, I think of Abdu, uh, uh, the, uh, Wad, uh, the son, and uh, Karim Wad and Khalifa Sal, uh, they may have, they, they found that situation very unfair to them, but they didn't call for violence. So this is a, a special case where you have uh, somebody who's been condoning uh, uprisings, calling for destruction, calling for, uh, and uh, and since he entered the game, and uh, they, they, I, I would also say that uh, they, they are really cracking down on, he, on him hmm. more severely than on others because he has opted for confrontation, hmm. for, for defying institutions. So um, we are all very uh, worried by the situation right now, because until now he failed, he has failed to call mm. his supporters to stop violence and to keep quiet. This is very necessary on his part. Mm. Uh, Mujahid, uh, supporters of Usman Sanko, of course, are angry. Uh, they have been denouncing the charges against the opposition leader. They have accused uh, President Macky Sall of using the justice system to eliminate political opponents. Um, how much of that sentiment is fueling all of this? Well, um, yeah, just to give a bit of uh, context, um, you know, uh, picking up uh, on the point uh, that raised by Borso is yes, the Senegal is often praised as a you know in the global politics as a stable democracy, is a beacon of stability, but that, that hasn't that has not been um, translated uh, in this uh, translate in the socio-economical conditions of the Senegalese people in so far. Um, there are significant concerns about increasing authoritarianism, authoritarianism, excessive use of force, police force that, that we've seen um, on the streets of Dakar, erosion of judicial, uh, judicial uh, independence, democratic backsliding. Um, these are serious concerns uh, because, you know, over the years, since 2021, we've seen uh, protests, anti-government process becoming more and more popular because uh, Sonko represents a large part of the Senegal's youthful population that have not benefited from the economic boom that the country has seen over the years, mm. right? So high GDP growth and the oil and gas reserves, um, they have mm. not been uh, significantly benefited from this from this uh, um, development. And then they accuse the government, this uh, President Sal, of failing to address the widespread 
um, socioeconomic I- uh, issues that the, the large parts of society is dealing with, especially mm. in urban areas that we see. So what happens is that the Sonko steps in and his uh, Pan-African and anti-Western stands um, that targets the political elite very harshly, uh, fight against the corruption since uh, 2016, since it was a tax, uh, um, tax inspector, mm. and question the significant uh, French influence that... Uh, that uh, you know, uh, uh, Paris enjoys on the country's economy and politics. So, in that sense, the widespread protests are not surprising, because the elimination of the uh, Sonko from the uh, election in 2024 well, uh, will likely increase this sense of disfranchisement among Mujahid, I'm, the young I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm, I'm going to yeah, get sure. back to you in a minute about the, the anti-French sentiment that you were just referring to. But uh, first, I, I want to go to Borso again. Borso, um, let's talk about another angle to all this that's, that's being discussed. Uh, are some of the tensions that we are witnessing now uh, a result of the fact that it's really unclear at this stage if President Saul intends to seek a third term as president? Well, that is the root uh, of this uh, whole situation. When we look at the patterns, uh, like Marie Roger mentioned earlier, with the cases of uh, Khalifa Sal and Karim Wad at the time before Sonko arrived at the uh, political scene in Senegal, uh, there was a question of third term. So we've had different alternance, what we call alternance in French. Uh, the first one was in 2000, putting an end to 40 years of uh, state power. Uh, for the for the uh, socialist party, so in 2000, Abdoulaye Wade came into power, uh, did his two terms to make it short. At, in 2012, Macky Sall came into power on the basis that Abdoulaye Wade will never run for a third term. So that was the number one reason why people voted for Macky Sall and against Abdoulaye Wade. Uh, and now what we're seeing is a repetition of those issues. Macky Sall, who hasn't said a word yet, official word about him um, willing to run, but everything around it looks like it. Uh, and even his, uh, his his allies in his political party, APR, have already stated uh, that he is their candidate for 2024. So having that in, in mind, the population of Senegal is not willing to repeat the same mistakes of the past, meaning refusing Abdoulaye Wad a third term, and now accepting it for Macky Sall. And that is the main issue that is like the cause of all this, uh, refusing a third term as a tradition for the past um, few uh, candid- um, presidential candidates, mm. and now having it in face and having to face it with violence. Mm. That is the major difference. And having to face it with someone who is not willing to let go. Sonko but- is not... Uh, willing to let go, and he's ready to use violence in mm-hmm. order to have um, the constitution respected, meaning no more than two consecutive terms. But besides that, there's also the question of women's rights, and I would like to come back to that. Uh, yeah, uh, Borso, let me, me to, let, let me, yeah, I'll, I'll get, I will right get back there. to you on that in just in just a couple of minutes. Uh, first, I want to ask Marie Roger to expand a little bit on on the discussion we were just having with regards to a potential third term for President Sal. Uh, President Sal has said that he uh, can that he believes he can run again for a third term because of changes that were made to the Constitution in 2016, which shortened the presidential term. Um, Marie Roger, from your point of view, is this a valid argument? Uh, uh, can this actually be done? You know, uh, like uh, uh, as explained uh, before, previously, right now, uh, Senegal, the situation in Senegal is very particular because uh, President uh, Macky Sall vowed not to run again, not to seek a third term. There are videos recalling that there are tweets he made where he, he called for demonstrations, but peaceful demonstration, I must say. Um, and he was very much against um, uh, a third term. So that's why uh, the Senegalese are very much, they are upset and uh, they don't like that issue. Um, so we understand that. Mm. Um, but the point is, uh, when you look at the, the, the story in Africa right now, you know, people who don't, residents who don't seek third terms are the exception. So, 
What I mean is, uh, we all want fresh air, fresh blood, new ideas. We, we want, uh, uh, you know, in uh, government to new governments to come so that you have a renewal of, of everything, new energy. And that's what we are, we are fighting for. But I don't believe it's something we have to die for. Because um, when you look at the uh, situation right mm. now, as I say, um, politi who, who are really benefiting for, mm. for uh, of, uh, third terms? Not the population. Only people who want power. Mm. And, uh, and also, you see, the judgment is very different. The, uh, uh, according to the situation, you see Rwanda, President Kagame has organized for him to, to stay maybe 20 years more. Nobody, nobody, you don't hear uh, uh, opposition very much, international opposition, even in Africa, you don't mm -hmm. hear that. So, and we, you see in Central Africa, Marie Roger, everywhere. I'm sorry to inter so, Marie Roger, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I just want to go back to um, Mujahid about a point that he was making a moment ago. Uh, Mujahid, you were you were speaking specifically about anti-French sentiment. I, I believe you said among supporters of Mr. Sanko. Could you expand on that and talk about, from your perspective, why that might be driving, uh, uh, whether it's his popularity or some of the protests? Well, yeah. I mean, historically, uh, the, the you know the French hold uh, significant economic and political uh, influence in the country as a formal um, colonizer, and um, and um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, since 2019, uh, France was the largest source of uh, f uh, foreign direct investment in Senegal since uh, it was taken over by um, China at the moment. So it holds a significant uh, power in the country specifically. And in the case of what, what uh, in the context of this this protest, what's happening is is that especially 20 uh, the protests that we we saw in um, 2021. Um, a lot of protesters uh, looted the uh, French businesses across the country, especially in Dakar, is because they, they claim that the source of the issues that they're having with um, the corruption, the socioeconomic inequalities, mm -hmm. um, these are the issues related to the French influence in, in, in the country. So there is this uh, perception in light of anti-French sentiment across different parts of West Africa mm -hmm. is, is, is that the French is uh, seriously involved in in uh, Senegalese politics and then they're the ones that are pulling the strings and, and uh, you know, Sonko representing a Pan-African stance and his supporters mm -hmm. align with that sentiment as well, um, saying that, uh, we don't want France involved mm. in our in our politics as well. Um, that's why we we saw that the protesters attacked the the French businesses in 2021. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the future, if the protests continue, we might be able to uh, see the same scenes again. Mm. Uh, more so. Um, so I want to get back to a point that you were trying to make a moment ago. Um, the question I have, women's rights groups in Senegal have expressed concern that the Sanko rape trial has set back women's rights in the country. What was it about the case that has so dismayed feminists and advocates for women's rights in Senegal? Women have been used for this case that has underlying political uh, matters, and that's their loss. The women lose in this process, and that's that, that's where the whole problem comes with uh, putting a cloud over all the fight that women have gone through in order to have these laws applied and respected in the country. Mm. So we here we have a woman accused of rape, uh, a, a man accused of rape, but because there is no proof and because of so many issues attached to politics over the case of rape itself, people now will just uh, not give any uh, attention to the real cases of, uh, of, of um, sexual assault. And that Marie brings together gender issues. It brings all together just issues that women will go through when it comes mm. time for them to stand up and talk about rape cases. So it's just a cloud over. Politics has been clouding uh, the gender issues and have been clouding right. the question of rape and how far women have come mm. to fight for their rights. So Marie far. Roger, um, let me ask you, if tensions continue to escalate in Senegal, what are the concrete steps that can be taken to try to calm things down? Well, I think uh, uh, in uh, this particular situation, um, 
both I would say both part the power the the, the public authority and Usman Sonko and and his uh, supporters are responsible of what's happening. So I think, and I I insist on that. I think Usman Sonko so should call his supporters and and ask them to stop rioting, stop violence. Um, he's the one who has uh, leverage on them. They will listen to the, to him and not to the government, uh, obviously. So. To show that he's a responsible man, I think he should do that because, at the end of the day, it's all about politics, and uh, we we polit they, they are there not uh, uh, they are there to ensure that people are not being killed, mm -hmm. and uh, especially young people, and uh, just because of, of because they want power. That's it. it's all about. We it's very important that he says he he comes out and he says. Please, let's calm down. We will work out this issue politically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because there are new around the rules. There are a lot of things which can be done from now. But first, the violence should, should stop. Mujahid, um, there is some question about what the ramifications of this verdict will be when it comes to Mr. Sonko's political future. From your vantage point, does the sentence against Mr. Sonko disqualify him as a presidential candidate in 2024? Can he still run? Uh, and also, can the sentence be appealed, or is this judgment final? Well, he will likely to be eliminated from the race. Uh unless there's a successful appeal by him, but that's very unlikely because the uh, the court in separate cases uh, refused his appeal. So he will uh, most likely to be eliminated from the race and taken uh, behind the bars. And in terms of the, uh, the imprisonment, it's two years, um, considering that half, uh, half, you know, a young Sonko is and then how uh, galvanized huge support, huge wave of support from the public. I do not uh, foresee that the, uh, this is the end of uh, Sonko's political future. He will definitely uh, remain as a significant actor in the Senegalese uh, politics moving forward. Mm. But there are, there are two, you know, there are two different, uh, specifically in the context of protest, there are two different scenarios. Either um, Sal will very harshly, repressively uh, squash the protest, uh, take uh, Sonko behind the bars and will go ahead with the third term. That mm. means increasing authoritarianism in the country. Or in the second, uh, second scenario is uh, following this strong and powerful pu public back, uh, pushback that will be at political negotiations between the different um, sites to find uh, a peaceful solution. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, maybe one last point in terms of possibility of the military coup, because we we uh, we heard over the you know last few days, uh, I do not foresee any possibility of the military coup because Senegal has a relatively functioning democracy, diverse mm -hmm. range of uh, political parties, robust civil society, and then they have influential social leaders, religious leaders. They usually step in to mediate the political dispute between mm -hmm. the, the uh, between the politicians. So uh, yes, it will definitely be a turbulent times for Senegal, mm -hmm. but I do not foresee definitely military intervention at this point. Borso, I know that there are a lot of issues at play when it comes to what's going on in Senegal right now. And also, we just have about two minutes left. But I, I want to ask you if if one of the things young people are taking away from this moment is if young people in Senegal are seeing this moment as their opportunity to put pressure on the government and address the issues that are impacting them the most. Uh, very, very simply put, the young people do not want a third term for President Macky Sall, and they do not want to see what they call their last chance for their hopes and dreams to come to pass just disappear with Sonko. Simply put, they don't want a third term. They do not want Sonko to be put in jail because there is a history of candidates putting us, being put aside because the president doesn't want them to run. For presidential. That's it. We right. have less than a minute, Marie Roger. If Macky Sall does announce that he will seek a third term, will more people come out into the streets? Do you believe that will be the case? Uh, probably. I, I, I think uh, people don't like the idea. There are a lot of people who don't like that idea, for sure, as we see. Uh, but 
some also do like the idea. We should say that too, because I, I met some. So the point is, if at, so, at, at the end of the day, he, he has enough uh, arguments, uh, legal arguments, because he said he has consulted this and that, and the, that the Supreme Court says he can run, um, I think what people can do is to ensure that the election is free and fair, that he can run, but he might not win. So uh, I think that the, the, but nobody should die for it right now. All right. Well, we have run out of time, so we're going to have to leave the conversation there. Thanks so much to all of our guests, Mujahid Durmaz, Marie Roger Bilowa, and Borso Tal. And thank you, too, for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Mohammed Jamjoum, and the whole team here, bye for now.